एंड वेलकम टू द न्यूज दिस वीक योर वन स्टॉप सोर्स फॉर द लेटेस्ट हैपनिंग्स इन द एल्कोबेब एंड हॉस्पिटैलिटी इंडस्ट्री आई एम शालिनी कुमार एंड आई एम हेयर विद यू टुडे विद द लेटेस्ट अपडेट्स ऑन पॉलिसी एंड रेगुलेटरी इश्यूज नेशनल एंड इंटरनेशनल डेवलपमेंट्स न्यू लॉन्चेस एंड मोर द न्यूज दिस वीक इज पावर्ड बाय द मोस्ट ट्रस्टेड ट्रेड पब्लिकेशन स्पिरिट्स Let's see what are the major headlines before I bring to you the detailed news. ED files charge sheet in Delhi liquor scam. Sixth round of India UK FTA negotiations commences. Punjab government to offer country liquor. Spy calls for addressing the high taxation issue. Delhi duty free attains records monthly sales. AB Invest makes sizable investment in India. Padmorika appoints new MD for India. Diawol Vodka by Shah Rukh Khan Sun. Expanding the 35.5 billion dollar trading relationship between India and the UK is expected to be a major part of the agreement. If the FTA negotiations achieve fruition along expected lines, it would enable the Indian companies to export to the UK at reduced tariffs and vice versa. This in turn will give an impetus to the trade between india and the uk the enforcement directorate has filed charge sheet in the delhi liquor scam in its charge sheet the enforcement directorate claimed that it caused the government a loss of 2873 crore rupees whereas the accused gained a profit of 295 crore rupees the charge sheet also claimed that the government officials as well as politicians were given 100 crore rupees by the accused involved in the matter it is stated that the investigation carried out in the current case by the ed so far has shown that samir mahendru was one of the kingpins and the primary beneficiary of the aforementioned criminal conspiracy a cbi team recently recorded this statement of k kavita mlc from bharat rashtra samiti party and daughter of the telangana chief minister k chandrashekhar rao in connection with the case related to delhi's controversial excise policy on 2nd december the cbi had issued a notice to k kavita under CRPC section 160 instructing her to join the probe on 6 December in connection with its investigation into alleged corruption in Delhi government's former excise policy The Punjab government informed the Supreme Court that soon the Punjab government will introduce a country liquor having 40% alcohol content as a healthy substitute for illegally brewed homemade liquor as a step to prevent sale of hooch in punjab especially in rural areas of punjab manufacturing and selling light country liquor is part of the punjab government's new excise policy it's time for short break stay tuned Ocean blue is the thrill. Welcome back and here are the industry updates.
International Spirits and Wines Association of India has informed that the future of India's alcohol beverages market has been jeopardized by high taxation of the alcohol beverage industry. The association pointed out that taxation accounts for 67 to 80 percent of prices of alcohol products in India, which doesn't leave enough room for suppliers and trade to sustain and manage their operations. According to Neeta Kapoor, CEO of SBI, India's alcohol industry has been in deep crisis due to inflation on one hand and high taxation on another. She cautioned that unless swift action is being undertaken to reverse the situation by decreasing taxes of increasing the product prices, India could soon be facing a situation that will be similar to killing the proverbial golden goose. She pointed out that the liquor industry had historically contributed 25 to 40 percent of revenues for state governments, but higher taxes without price hikes was pushing the industry into a crisis. Anoysher Bush in Bev has been investing 5 billion rupees in its India business with the objective to increase its production capacity. The money will be channeled to AB Invest Bury in Mysore, Karnataka, where Budweiser Premium, Budweiser Magnum and Hoy Garden beers are being produced. This investment is of course expected to create employment opportunities in the coming years. Earlier this year, AP Inver also invested in the Indian market when it entered the whiskey category with Budweiser Magnum Double Barrel. AP Inver partnered with Sazdek to produce the whiskey. Parnorika India has unveiled its One for Our Planet campaign, which sets in motion the elimination of 100% permanent monocartons from its packaging by June 2023. The campaign aims to bring together responsible consumption practices and nudge today's purpose-driven consumers to make eco-conscious decisions. The One for Our Planet campaign film showcases the company's commitment to reducing the environmental impact of secondary packaging and the waste generated across each step of its value chain. The campaign film highlights Parnorika India's step towards a greener tomorrow by reducing carbon emission every year by 7,310 tons, saving almost 2.5 lakh trees and reducing landfill by 18,745 tons. The global travel retail arm of Parnorika has launched the mall gallery at Delhi Airport. Mall Gallery showcases single malls from Speyside. This move aims to educate and engage consumers and is divided into two zones, Groundbreakers and Masterpieces. The Groundbreakers zone is focused on discovery targeting newcomers to the single mall category. It presents the Glenlivet and Aberlour whiskies. Masterpieces caters to the Connoisseur by delivering a collection of prestigious single malls, including those from lost distilleries from Secret Speyside and rare expressions from the Glenlivet. From the house of Moe Hennessy, India, luxury single mall Glen Morengi is set to dazzle audiences as it amalgamates art and music with the delicious design project. Here, Glenn Morenji teams up with Indian-American artist Kirsch Kale to launch a digital art X music experience that has the potential to take audiences to a journey of awe and wonder across different touch points. Besides Kirsch Kale, Nikunj Patel of Studio Mobius is also featured in this immersive long-form digital art series. In its pursuit, to bring luxury moments of consumption through elevated localized experiences, this art and music series sets up three fantastical moments of brand enjoyment titled Coit, 
ras and shararat taylor wines from south australia has been launched in india taylor wines has secured an import agreement with ace beverages following an introduction by austrade since 2018 austrade has been working with taylor wines and has introduced the winery to importers advised on getting wine samples to mumbai and provided other assistance the year has been fantastic with delhi duty free already exceeding pre pandemic sales levels the monthly sales at delhi duty free in november 2022 surpassed 49.7 crore rupees making it the highest monthly sales ever for delhi duty free over the next few months delhi duty free will continue to invest in the retail experience and is on track to maintain its current growth rate through 2022 and beyond to support the busy holiday and new year season ahead delhi duty free has planned several store wide promotions and brand activations as well as best in class offers on top brands across categories The cream liqueur player house of Somras was introduced at Delhi duty free at Indira Gandhi International Airport through Esprit Spirits Private Limited. Somras comes in three expressions which are Somras coffee cream liqueur, Somras mango cream liqueur, Somras chai cream liqueur. Buffalo Trace Distillery made history by filling its 8 millionth barrel of bourbon since prohibition. The 8 millionth barrel comes just 4 years after the 7 millionth barrel which was filled in 2018 due to the 1.2 billion dollar expansion experts at the distillery over the last several years. On hand to mark the occasion was Kentucky's Governor Andy Bisher, Kentucky Senate Majority Floor Leader Demond Taylor, and Buffalo Trace Distillery officials, including third-generation team member Freddie Johnson, whose family has been involved in every million barrel of the distillery since 1942. Recently, the Dominican Republic promoted some of its Best Dominican cigars and rum in New Delhi to attract Indian tourism and investment. A large number of guests enjoyed high quality cigars and rum from the Dominican Republic. Dominican Ambassador David Puig said that the idea behind these products is to draw attention not only to the country as a tourist destination but also to business and investment opportunities. The event promoted Barcelo rum which was founded in 1930. The Dominican ambassador said the strategy of Barcelo rum is to sell its premium products here in India and position itself in a market with high purchasing power with members who want to try new things. Regarding cigars, the ambassador emphasized that while the Dominican Republic is the world's leading producer In India, Cubans control 95% of the cigar market, necessitating a change in a strategy. Going on a short break, please stay back. Long shot, but I got the reach. Pop lock, now I'm on the leash. Mic drop, I ain't gotta preach. I just do what comes natural. Stalling Reserve, come alive. Welcome back, and let's see which new products are launched in Indian market recently. Slap, a company founded by Aryan Khan, Leti Blagojeva, and Bunty Singh, has launched. Diawol Vodka, a global luxury collective, Diawol aims to provide consumers with the best curated lifestyle experiences and products across fashion, 
beverages and exclusive experiential events. In a milestone partnership with AB InBev India, Diabol is presenting its first offering, an ultra premium black pearl filtered vodka that is expected to be the preferred choice of discerning Alcobev consumers who have a taste for exclusivity. The launch of Diabol Vodka is designed to heighten the beverage experience for consumers. An amalgamation of heritage and exceptional quality, Diabol is a single estate liquid made from 100% winter wheat. It is a mellow, well-rounded spirit with a subtle flavor profile and a unique taste. Beyond the mandated charcoal column filtration process, the brand has refined its liquid using black pearls to deliver an unmatched smoothness. The bespoke grain to glass production cycle lends the liquid with a spirit of purity. India is one of several international launch markets for Diabol Vodka and the product is now available across the country in select premium walk-in liquor outlets and bars. Bira 91 has announced the launch of Rice, which is projected as the country's first ever premium rice strong lager. Made with the local rice from India, the beer is dry, light on the palate and has a brilliant sparkle. With less than 8% ABV, the beer embraces the Surachi Ace hops from Japan, which gives it eccentric and fine subtle lemon citrus aromas. Bira 91 rice will be available in 330ml and 650ml bottles and 500ml cans across metropolitan cities in India. Piccadilly Group has launched Kamikara, which is a pure cane juice rum. It is being projected as the first cane juice rum from India. The name of the beverage, which means liquid gold in Sanskrit, is the product of maturation for 12 years in American oak casks. The honey-hued, naturally aged rum with no added color, caramel, sugar and flavors is characterized by complex yet balanced notes and is bottled at 50% ABV. In India, each bottle of this rum is expected to be set at 6,200 rupees and the majority of the bottles of this rum will be exported. Diageo's Orphan Barrel Whiskey Company has announced the launch of the third and final single grain scotch whiskey in its series, Buckety Mark 26 year old. Hailing from the storied port Dundas distillery, this masterful blend pays homage to the 24 and 25 year old Makiti Buck bottles, yet possesses a distinct profile on its own as the oldest, wisest and most mature whiskey in the collection. The limited edition bottle is available at select spirit retailers in selected places with an SRP of 299.99 US dollars for 750 ml. Torres Brandy strengthens its links with the art world with the creation of the Oak Canvas series, an artistic project that invites young creators to transform an oak barrel such as the ones used to age brandy into a work of art. A limited collector's edition of Jame I will be created from these works. The first work in the collection out on the market now captures the unique and colorful creation by Ricardo Cavolo, an urban artist and illustrator of international renown. This Cavolo creation is featured on the first limited edition of Jamie I that pays tribute to the founder of Familia Torres and his innovative spirit. Pardonica has appointed Paul Robert Buya as the new Managing Director for Parnorica India. In the new role, Paul will modify the firm's India business strategy, strengthen the organization and its workforce 
and recognize new opportunities for profitable and sustainable business expansion for Parnodika, India. Boyer succeeds Thibo Cuny, who resigned in October owing to health issues and will report to Philip Guetta, Chairman and CEO of Pernodica Asia. He will also join the Asia Executive Committee of the business. In 2020, Boyer was appointed Managing Director for the Southern Europe area of Pernodica. He has 27 years of experience of working internationally in marketing, sales and general management in a variety of industries and corporations. Yamanashi Mejo Company Limited is one such sake brewery one must visit not only for its beautiful surroundings but also for their high quality sparkling sake. All their sakes brewed in harmony with the pristine waters of Hakushu are testament to the founder's strictest adherence to age-old practices. This story from Japan is brought to you by Bishan Kumar who had spent a day at this idyllic brewery located in Yamanashi prefecture in Japan which is surrounded by Mount Fuji and the Southern Alps. <laughs> Yamanashi Mijo Company Limited, also known as Chichikin, is currently run by the 12th and 13th generation of Kitahara family. Both father Hyogo Kitahara, who is the chairman, and his son Tushima Kitahara run a tight ship, maintaining the highest standards of sake brewing. Tushima Kitahara told me the Chichikin sparkling and still sakes are made using water from one of the softest water growing regions in Japan which gives unique characteristics to its producers. The company produces 8,70,000 bottles of sake annually of which 10% are being exported. 10 different types of sparkling sakes and 10 different types of still sakes are produced at the brewery. Their main export market is South Asia. Tushima said that his company began developing sparkling sake around 2010 and introduced it to the market in 2014 and currently they make about 10 variants of sparkling sake. His ambition is to make Shichigan sake an alternative to champagne and his sakes are listed in French restaurants as well. It's a good news for the sake lovers in India that sparkling sake of Shichikin is all said to be found on the shelves and bars in India too. The 300 year old history of Yamanashi Mijo Company Limited is replete with fascinating stories. Just before the entrance of Shichikin Brewery, an old building adjacent to it is a sacred place. This is where Meiji Emperor once stayed for a night during the imperial tour. That was in 1880 and then the Meiji Emperor were revered as God and people were not allowed to see him. The access to this sacred place is restricted and only 15 people are allowed to visit it at a time. That too only after booking in advance. I hope you have enjoyed this bulletin. I will be back with fresh updates next week. Wish you all the Merry Christmas and Happy Festivities. Enjoy responsibly.